What's going on guys? Today in this video, we're gonna go over three things that are typically always in good videos. If you find yourself watching this video after December 10th, just go ahead and go to this timestamp right here because what I'm about to say is not gonna be relevant. If you find yourself watching this video before December 10th, I just wanna inform you all that a good friend of mine's, a co-director, my other creative director, homie, Cotton Films is doing a giveaway over on his channel where he's giving away a few different things, a nice backpack, a Bluetooth speaker, as well as 10 of my personal digital products. So if you're interested in entering yourself to win anything in his giveaway, head over to his channel. I'll link it up above in the info card, one of these corners. Just head over there, check the video out, subscribe, do whatever you have to do to enter yourself to win. Today in this video, we're gonna go over three things that are typically in pretty much every single good video that you watch online. Whether that be a music video, a travel vlog, a short film, these three things are in all of these videos that are good. So if you ever find yourself writing down a checklist of what you need to do to make your videos better or to make your video as best as it can be, these three things right here are going to help you tremendously. One major thing that every good video has is correct frame rates. Over the past few weeks, I've been doing tons of video reviews on the channel. If you're interested in that type of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But over the past few weeks, I've been doing tons of video reviews on tons of different types of videos, travel videos, vlogs, music videos. And one thing that I'm constantly running into is incorrect frame rates and incorrect ways to use the frame rates. All Hollywood films have a base frame rate of 24 frames per second, and your video should always be exported at 24 frames per second, regardless of the frame rate that you filmed them at. If you're going for a cinematic vibe for your videos, you have to have your frame rates right, and 24 frames per second should always be your base frame rate for everything. Now, when I say base frame rate, I'm talking about the shots that you don't intend to use for slow motion. 24 frames per second should always be used for those shots, and your export should always be at 24 frames per second. Always, always, no exception. If you're going for a cinematic vibe, you need to have 24 frames per second on your export. Now, one major exception for the 24 frames per second rule is if you plan to use the shot for slow motion. For shots that you plan to convert into any type of slow motion should be filmed in frame rates higher than 24 frames per second. 36 frames per second could work for this, 48, 60, 72, 96, 120, etc. Pretty much any frame rate above 24 frames per second should be filmed if you're planning on converting that shot into slow motion. When filming in rates higher than 24, it's also very important to note if you plan on adjusting the speed of the clip in post, you should always use simple math to get the equivalence of that clip back down to 24. A really simple example of this is if you film the clip at 60 frames per second in post, you should slow the percentage down to 40%. But another easy and really simple way that you can do this as well is if you find yourself a Premiere, you can right click on the clip in the project bin, go to modify and interpret footage, and you can just go to the base frame rate and change that to 24. That's a really simple solution to get your shots at the right frame rate and the right percentage of speed. Now you have lots of cameras like the one that I film on, the Lumix GH4 that does all the conforming in the camera. So most of these people don't even have to worry about this. But if you find yourself in post and you're adjusting the speed, make sure you only go down to 24. If you go anything below that, your footage starts to look weird. Just don't go below 24. Use simple math, get back to 24. The next thing that every good video has in it is good B-roll. Now me and my field, B-roll is just random shots of people doing random things, but you can also apply B-roll to film, short films, travel vlogs, etc. The important thing that B-roll does to your footage is it gives a better understanding of what's going on at that particular location and or scene. B-roll is basically just you filming the little intricate details of what's going on. It gives your video better context and it just makes it overall more pleasing to look at. The whole time you've been looking at this entire video, I've just been throwing random B-roll shots over top of me talking and it's just a lot more interesting than watching me talk, right? Here we're gonna take a look at a sequence of shots that has absolutely no B-roll shots added into it and then we're gonna look at that exact same scene with B-roll in it and you all will see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, good B-roll just really consists of you filming the little small intricate details. This can be shots of someone's feet walking across the ground. This can be shots of the environment. This can be shots of facial expression, shots of hand movements, shots of little things that really get your point across of what you're trying to portray in the shot. So if you're shooting a short film and you want the audience specifically to know that the character in the scene is feeling anxious, what you would do is you would film a really cool, intricate close-up shot of the person's foot tapping on the floor, or maybe even them biting their nails, etc. Those little things just add to the feeling and they give the viewer a little bit more context to what's actually going on in the shot. 
what's actually going on in the shot. The last and final thing that every single good video has that you love is good color, color. Good video color consists of the feeling that you're trying to give off to the viewer. An example of this is if you're trying to create a cold and moody and gritty vibe for the video that you're making, you're not gonna wanna put a lot of lively warm tones in that video. And vice versa, if you're doing something that's lovey and lively, you're not gonna wanna take out the saturation of the tones and add lots of blues and mild earth tones into that. You're gonna want things to be bright and lively, lots of saturation, lots of warm tones. Now there are tons of ways to improve the color of your video. The first starts with the picture profile that you're filming your video in. I think if you're planning on doing heavy color grading for your video, you should always film in the flattest possible profile that you have on hand. Whether that be log, cine style, cine like D, cine 4, whatever flat picture profile that you have on hand, if you're planning on doing heavy color grading, always film flat. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier in post. Now color grading itself is a whole nother video and I have tons of those which I'll link above. I have a video on the top five free LUTs that I like. I have tons of LUTs that I've created myself and color grading is just its own separate art. So if you're interested in those videos that I have, click the link above in the info card. I don't know, I'll put it up above somewhere and I'll also put some down in the description. But like I said, I have tons of videos on how I color grade, how you should color grade using LUTs, etc. So take those into consideration, check those videos out, check out tons of videos on color grading. So if your video has good frame rates, good B-roll, good color, it should be visually pleasing for the viewer to watch. But for short films and films and other narrative work, story is going to be king. Story is going to sit above all of these other things. But a good story is going to be complemented so much by these things right here. You get a good story, you get the right frame rates, you get good B-roll, you get good color, the video is going to be amazing. So take these things into consideration. I was going to put story into this video, but I do music videos myself and a lot of my audience also does music videos. So a lot of the time story is just not that relevant into what we do. So there it is. Always add these things to your checklist. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop me a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel. Also, like I said, go check out Kindness Giveaway as well. Go enter yourself into a chance to rent some free stuff. I always want to get you guys involved when I can. Peace out though, guys. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to check y'all out on my next video.